a couple of more bumps uh, in the road. Uh, Lindsay Piegza, uh, chief economist at Stiefel. Uh, Steve, stick around as we bring Lindsay in. I guess my question for you is to react to uh, what we've heard from the Fed, what we've seen this morning in the Fed numbers. But the overall question here, did the Fed err in not raising interest rates higher than they are today? Did they need to go an extra increment or two to, br to, to, to bring inflation down reliably? Well, I think that's the big question. Is this the appropriate terminal level? Or with the Fed hyper-focused on achieving that soft landing, did they fall short of achieving that sufficiently restrictive level think? in order to think? control inflation? Well, as you know, we were long standing that the Fed needed to raise rates up to 6% and perhaps higher if, if we continued to see inflation uh, behave on, in a, an un, um, excuse me, behave in an unruly manner. So I, I do think that the Fed was so focused on trying to achieve this delicate balance that the Fed historically does not have a great track record in, in achieving that they did stop short. And unfortunately, now what we're left with is inflation reversing course, still double what the Fed's 2 percent target is. And the committee now is losing, I think, a, a lot of credibility in the marketplace by sitting on the sideline not reacting to three consecutive months of inflation reversing wow. course. It's notable we're talking credibility again. Lindsay, is there a path that you see where the next move could actually be a hike instead of a cut? Well, I think if inflation remains at these levels, with the core leveling off at about 4 percent, I, I do think that the base case is for the Fed still likely to give us one or two rate cuts. This is a committee, after all, desperate to provide relief. But without more meaningful improvement in inflation after one or maybe two rate cuts in the second half of the year, I would expect a second round pause, a prolonged pause. That being said, if inflation does continue to gain momentum, so now we're talking about the core pushing above 4 percent, I think in this scenario, the Fed may be willing to re-engage with one or two additional rate hikes, but it would have to be a meaningful increase and on a sustained basis. How about that, Steve Leesman, if I can turn back to you? Uh, we're in, I guess, what you would call that higher for longer phase, but Lindsay is addressing the question of maybe we didn't go high enough. I want to just address something Lindsay said, and, and, and Lindsay is my friend, so maybe, I hope this doesn't come on too strong. But, Lindsay, how can the Fed lose credibility in a market that itself has no credibility when it comes to predicting the Fed? The market took off and decided there were six rate cuts coming from absolutely nothing said by the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve, I think, stuck to its guns amid that kind of essentially uh, uh, strong pricing the other way by the market and went back down to three, uh, three rate cuts, and now they're back down to two. So I don't think the market has any particular uh, monopoly on the truth or credibility when it comes to the outlook here. It's been wrong, and I think maybe the Fed is right here to kind of wade, in, and I guess wading is the best way to think about it, with its mark the way it is. Theoretically, the Federal Reserve believes it is restrictive. That's the theory. If you look at what they believe the long-run neutral rate is, even if you believe it's a little higher, they think they're re exerting restraint. Maybe the problem the Fed had was not necessarily not raising high enough, but talking about cutting quick enough. I just think the market itself lacks a certain credibility when it comes to judging the Federal Reserve.